When I'm speaking to you, I want you to look into my eyes because I want you to know how you serious I am. You, you better look at me when I'm talking to you because you're getting knocked back, aren't we? There's no messing around, there's no dancing. It's either me or you. Personally, if I could, I'd whisper in his ear and say, listen, let's have a fight. You made the best man win. You've got good speed and good power. If you land it on me first, I'm gone. So why not take a risk and have a fight? Tyson's new, he's fresh, he's raw. You know, I mean, you see some of the things he does. I mean, no, no one in boxing really does that, do they? I mean, we're all in for a treat. I don't think anybody that uh, listens to that uh, will not be able to buy it. I mean, when have you ever seen David Hay lost for words? And he was lost for words time and time again. Oh, my God! Fight fans, welcome back. And I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. 2013 was a vital year for heavyweight boxing. Just right there, that's okay. Hello, stick. goodbye. Stick. On a world level, it was the calm before the storm. But down on the domestic stage, a handful of Brits fought tooth and nail for their shot at the big time. He's going to win the world title, no question. He's in a different league to every other heavyweight prospect in Europe right now. Well, this is where the journey begins, isn't it? Whilst Anthony Joshua's introduction gathered pace. Do we have another Lennox Lewis on our hands? Do we have another Audley Harrison on our hands? Or do we have something in between? Audley Harrison's curtains were slowly closing. Down he goes in round three. And Chisora was coming off three back-to-back -back losses, which left Fury, Hay, and Price, a triangle of polarizing characters snapping at one another's ankles. I'm the best fighter on the planet, including all weights, because there's not a man born from his mother can beat Tyson Fury. I don't care if he's seven foot or three foot tall. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced I can crush anyone in the world. Um, I'm in great condition, as you can see. I can punch and land punches whenever I choose to. It, it takes someone to bring that out to me. When, when someone mistakes niceness for, for weakness, I won't stand for it. getting above domestic stage now. I think he's going to fight in America next. There's a lot of talk that he could be fighting Tony Thompson, a double world title challenger. Looking as powerful and confident as ever, and yet to find his kryptonite, David Price was on a nine fight KO streak, which placed him to most as the cream of the crop. Let's be noted that uh, Lennox Lewis has said that uh, David Price is the heir apparent, and so he even endorses David Price. So that's some uh, additional uh, pressure. I think he could go all the way. He's got the talent, and uh, he's got the he's got the hype and the determination. So uh, and when Lennox says that, you know, that's that's almost like that, that's the British stamp of approval tell. there. He was closely followed, however, by Tyson Fury, who would taunt and provoke him at every given opportunity. Just a Liverpool plumber. I'll fight David Price any day of the week. You see you, you plumber from Liverpool. It's personal between me and you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. That's what he was called, wasn't he? By Tyson Fury, not bad work for a plumber, by the way. No overtime needed. Fight against David Price or Tyson Fury, does that not appeal to you? No, not at all. No. No, even, though the British pub, even though the British public would love to see that. No disrespect to any of them, but, you know, I'm old now. Plus I'm too small, how big them guys are. David Hay, despite a glistening cruiserweight campaign, still held heavyweight question marks. He had captured the public's imagination by conquering a seven-foot giant. Oh, oh, he's got a guy with a left hook. What a finish here! He had put away Audley in three. And he's gonna finish it here, I think he does finish it. But the last couple of years had seen him come under fire after a lackluster points loss to Vladimir Klitschko. David Hay just cannot say anything up whatsoever. It's just wild swings. Everything he does is off balance. And that's the reason he keeps going over. If that had been me, I'd have left my heart in that ring. And I got knocked spark out. There's no, no shame in losing a fight. Losing and not trying, trying to survive, that's disgraceful in my opinion. I'd never do that. I could carry it out the ring before I do that. After talking, 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 talking what he was going to do, and then to absolutely produce nothing and then to blame it all on his pinky toe. At this point, Fury versus Price looked like the one to make. Two giants with power, speed, and brimming with confidence. He's probably watching this. You got a message for him? Tyson Fury. I know you're fighting, man. Got a lot of respect for you. Now let's get the fight on. See who's the better man, like we've been arguing for the last few years over there. And Let's get it done. Price's wins had been more convincing, but Fury's were more exciting. That crossover defense, trying desperately to land the right. That one missed by about a foot and a half. Fury with a right up and got the rocks by Gitchner's boots. The 
Gypsy King had shown a bit of everything. Front-footed aggression, fleet-footed dexterity, and character in abundance. Cesar and this man, Tyson Fury, laid it on the line. For you! I'll see you tomorrow when you bounce! Right now. Unfortunately, despite screaming from the rooftops in his own unique way, I'll fight David Price when the time comes, and I'll knock his face in for free. How was that? It was a fight that both parties were giving time to marinate to increase earning power. Because there's nobody else to fight. Yeah, That's so what it you've is. got Deontay Wilder. I know girl. he had. They all do not want to fight. An off-script U.S. debut, being floored by Steve Cunningham. Cunningham has floored Fury. Followed by the retirement of Vitaly Klitschko, meant Fury had been frozen out of his long-awaited world title shot. Yeah, when you grow a pair of balls, come fight me, and I'll relieve you of all them belts. You know, but obviously that's not going to happen because he's never going to fight me. And um, we already know this because they're going to retire before you fight me. That's right, isn't it? Right. So you can have any opponent in the world, so why Fury? Fortunately, it left two of British boxing's most controversial characters with nowhere else to go. The fans demand it. You know, the, the fans have not mentioned anyone other than Tyson Fury for the last few months. So, you know, you've got to give them, they ask for something, you've got to give them what they want. So after all the rumours, the speculation and the tactical moves on either side of the negotiating table, we're finally good to go. At a press conference in central London, we watched David Hay and Tyson Fury come head to head. Hey Fury. That's going to be massive. Well, you said it and I didn't. How do you see this fight going? Oh my. To be honest with you, I see this fight going one way, and that's my way. In this one, there was no good guy. Both men lapped up the villain role as their clash of characters made it all the more perfect. He's a big uh, six foot nine giant, 21 fights unbeaten, and uh, he's talking a load of smack. He said he's going to smash me up and retire me, blah, blah, blah. Fury was rough, rugged, and methodical. Hay was chiseled, well polished, and fierce. Biggest fight of the year by a mile. Number one by a mile. And um, David A's in for a real good idea. The Gypsy King had shown a vulnerability to overhand rights from smaller men. And the Haymaker had shown difficulty against the taller, more imposing figures. It's uh, a massive heavyweight fight for this country, the biggest since Lennox Lewis fought Frank Bruno those years ago. Hay was usually the talker, intimidating his opponents and bringing the heat. You'll never be able to stay hey, foot in England hey, again David, after this. You ain't the prophet. You're gonna, you're you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna slink back off to LA okay. and hide out in the f***ing hills. Okay. But even at this stage of his career, Long before the Wilder promises and the Klitschko mind games, Tyson Fury was already a different kettle of fish. Your typically kind of outrageous, outspoken behaviour in a press conference seemed to put David Hay in his shell a little bit. He was a lot quieter than we're used to seeing him. I want him to be the champion in this fight because this is the last time he's ever going to be a champion in history again. Never. Why do you think that was? You know, because he's used to being the vocal person. He's used to um, talking the talk when it comes to people. But, you know, he ain't going to out-talk me in a million years. And I think he got the drift of that after the first five minutes. Tyson Fury is coming out of all these things. What is going through? Already. you think of something to come back with or are you generally laughing I, I, to yourself? It's either me or you. On the night, it's having it. I ain't running around from you. I ain't Vlad with no art and no b****. I'm Tyson Fury and I come to fight. At the start, I started thinking about coming back with stuff, but then I, I'd be lying myself to his level. Hayes' recent shortcomings and blemished record gave Fury something to chip away at. I'm the one who's on everyone's tongue. You're just the one who stinks the place out against people and blames it on your little toes, making excuses. They told us he was going to decapitate uh, Vladimir and Vitaly, and he didn't do f all when he went there. Run around the ring and uh, got humiliated and got his little cart made an excuse, you know. And I hate when boxers make excuses after fights, it makes me sick. Um, but, you know, I, I broke my toe uh, three weeks ago and there was no way I was going to pull out of this fight. And then to absolutely produce nothing and then to blame it all on his pinky toe. David Hay didn't try and win that fight, in my opinion. He tried to survive. But uh, obviously, Hay would perhaps be far more aggressive against kids like Chisora and uh, Fury. I couldn't give a about being a celebrity, being a, on somebody's tongue or anything, in the newspapers you are. You're a celebrity little fighting man. The coming weeks saw a clear dislike form. 
as studio face-offs and packed out press conferences brought the two within touching distance of one another. He thinks I'm just a small pumped up cruiserweight um, that's fought a load of bums and he's going to come out and as he said in the press conference, swap me like a fly. You're a stepping stone, sir. I'm stepping on you. You're, I've got a fly squatter and you're a little fly and it's going to go... Tsh. Is that right, Adam? You know, am I going to fight the best David A ever? Yes. That's good because after I beat him, I don't want no excuses for people to say he was over the hill, he was past it, he was thinking about other things. Fury seemed to know he was all wrong for David and his extreme self-confidence seemed to throw the Londoner off. I can beat Usain Bolt because, 100 metres. But you can't, that's the only How, reason. Why not? How, why can't I? Because why? it's disbelief. Aha, finally we hit the nail on you the head. You can't do disbelief. it, I can. So you can beat Usain Bolt as well, yeah? No, I can beat you though. I don't need to beat Usain Bolt, do I? But if David A comes to try and knock me out, then it's gonna be a fight. Because as he said to Vladimir, how are you gonna come and fight? The hangmaker's coming for you, trust get, me. Get you can line. hide, don't hide. Why are you running for? Don't hide, come and fight, don't hide, come and fight. I, I, I can't. Bring the fight. I'm asking you the question now, my friend. Are you gonna come and fight? The September showdown loomed, tickets sold within 24 hours, and a verbal game of cat and mouse ensued. Now, if you're a fan of boxing, you'll know all about Tyson Fury. If you're not, then you soon will. Eagerly awaited 10 million pound fight with David Hay. Stuart Pollitt was waiting for him, but he was scared, at Manchester Airport. Has David Hay's worst nightmare just landed? All right, back in the UK, baby. Tyson Fury is ready for the biggest bout of his career. So you've got to get people excited, and he's got people excited. They might be excited to see him get knocked out, but it's excited nonetheless. Not only am I going to splatter David E, I'm going to smash that robotic Ukrainian into next week as well. Fury pressed buttons and turned up the heat, sitting somewhere on the cusp of being annoying, enthralling, and absolutely terrifying. They do say they do say never to argue with an idiot, as they uh, always beat you on experience. You told me a story about when you was at the amateurs. Mr. David Hay, you asked him for a photo, you, you didn't get the response you would wanted from one of your heroes. About 2007, I left a bitter, bitter taste in my mouth. I was only a kid, and listen, he disrespected me that night, yeah? I was amateur boxer, and I came to shake his hand. He looked at me like I was a piece of <laughs> But I, I said to myself, if I ever come up to be on a level to fight somebody, I'm going to take him out, I'm going to rip his heart out of his body and feed it to him. And that's what I promise I'll do. This is my special message to David the Haymaker Hay. David, I'm going to rip your heart out, make you eat it, you I'm going to make you yourself. Hay had drafted in some huge heavyweights, including Deontay Wilder, as preparation for the bout. We've got two weeks to go to where Tyson Fury gets knocked out on September 28th. But sparring whispers suggested things weren't going as smoothly as expected. Uh, training with David Hay recently, been inspiring. Oh, it's been absolutely brilliant. You know, I've got no marks on my face. Um, my nose is still straight. Um, I can go on and on and say how great and safe David e is. You know, just just like you know uh, Tyson Camp can say how great and safe he is. Sparring can harden any of my fights so far. I've been doing it every other day. It's been very, 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 very tough. I was training Saturday morning. I was in the gym and I got a call from Peter saying I'll come up to the room urgent news. With just a week to go in the final sparring session of the camp, the haymaker suffered a cut above his left eye, forcing the fight to be canceled indefinitely. How did it happen? I don't know, second round, everything's going okay and the back to the corner, cut, it happens. Um, uh, before I was on my way I thought yeah he's pulled out because I always said he was going to pull out kept saying, don't pull out, don't pull out. I saw a couple of his interviews, and I think he had a feeling as well that it wouldn't the happen. The whole Fury camp oh, yeah, seemed to have had that feeling that this fight weren't, weren't, weren't going to happen. Yeah. Things were going wrong. George Groves left the camp, so it must have been a camp. Um, I heard he was getting done in, inspiring. It was another bout of frustration for Team Fury, and a moment that might have changed heavyweight history forever. Why can I not get my time to shine? Give me a reason. Mind games aside, if the 2013 showdown did happen, Hay could have seriously challenged Fury. David is my pick for this. Uh, inside three rounds. He has, you know, one punch knockout power. Uh, with that speed, will make him heavy favourite, in my opinion. Um, you'd fancy Hay to be too quick for him and have too much sideways movement for him. Honestly, I think Hay knocks him out. I, mean, I would probably bet my money on Hay because they got 12 rounds and Tyson is going to get hit. If you try to go and make a slug first, David will catch him. But now, 
15 months out of professional competition, the ring rust and inactivity would mean we would never truly see the same haymaker again. Emotions are going to get involved. I think you're wrong. I think... I expect you to say everybody's that. Everybody's wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Haymaker calling, letting you guys know that my fight with Tyson Fury has been rescheduled for February 8th live on Sky Box Office. Father Time was on Fury's side, and he knew it. No matter what the bookies say, what these boxing pundits say, what these so-called experts say, I'm gonna win. And so, with the bout quickly re-signed for February 8th, the pressure resumed. But Team Fury and a growing number of onlookers were becoming increasingly skeptical. And an IFL interview, which has aged beautifully, pretty much summed it up. I just end up with nothing really. And I don't think he's gonna take the fight in February anyway. I think someone else is gonna prop up and he's gonna take it. I'm looking forward to it, Shira. it's gonna be fun. The, whole, the, the world wants to see this fight, it's the biggest fight in heavyweight boxing. And I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. But he really wants to make his claim as the best heavyweight on the planet and by demolishing me, he'll be right up there in the number, probably number three in the world if we can beat me, which he's not gonna be able to do. Was the pressure too much? Had Fury's mind games taken the haymaker to a place he'd never been before? Or was it simply a career-changing sequence of unfortunate events? Either way, before year out, an image of a hospitalized David Hay would force another cancellation, and five hours of shoulder surgery would send Hay into retirement on doctor's advice. Now is David Hay about to hang up his gloves for good? The former boxing heavyweight champion has been dealt a crushing blow, not by an opponent, but by doctors. It's legitimate, a week ago he underwent a five hour um, operation on his shoulder to reconstruct his shoulder. And I think that, that that will be the end. You know, Tyson Fury go his own way and I, I think that David Hay may slip into retirement. You think this is not the last we see of David Hay in the ring. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, I, think we're, I think there's still a bit more to come. And now it's a really difficult job for Tyson Fury and his promoters and his team because where do you go? I've, I've had yeah. better years. I had better years. 2013 is a very unlucky year for the Haymaker. You know, sure. people talk about the Wilder fight, people talk about the Steve Irm fight. They're all great fights, but the money's not there. Hay entered the initial 2013 bout as a huge favourite. But hindsight is a crazy thing, and you'd now expect Fury's size, reach, and youth to have simply been too much. If you could see what me and Pete have seen in the gym, the world-class sparring partners, the shape he was in. David A was going to be an easy fight, I promise you. It was going to be a very easy fight, and I think they got win today. It could have gone either way. If Hay managed to land the same way as Cunningham, Tyson Fury got too aggressive. his killer instinct might have been enough to get Fury out of there. He's hurt him, and David Hay goes for the finish. But the Gypsy King had better movement than Klitschko, who had managed to completely nullify Hay. The plus points for Tyson Fury now is his profile has risen incredibly through the fact he hasn't even had a fight. Either way, an unbroken Hay versus a green Tyson Fury would have been an incredible fight. Don't make a cup of tea, don't get off the sofa, because it's gonna be one of those fights. The closest we'd eventually get came four years later in the form of Tony Bellew, a man who, employing the same confidence and tactics as Fury, was also all wrong for David. And when you look at me, I know exactly what's going through your mind. Boy, I'm gonna render you unconscious. I'm gonna, you know, believe me, you know. And it will close the curtain on David Hayes' career forever. Because it doesn't matter what you do, how hard you train, what weights you lift, you're going to lose on May the 5th. Because you are going to get pushed again to a place where you don't want to be, where you haven't been for a long, long time, and it's going to fail you again. Push off the back foot and try to do that. With two back-to-back -back losses, the Haymaker eventually bowed out of the sport, and whilst the fury Hay debacle left a sour taste in the mouth of both men, it would be Fury who had the last laugh. The great fight that never happened. <laughs> that was the one that never happened, but it was, it was. Regrets, regrets that fight never happened. They say happened. time is a healer.
and I'm healed now, thank God. <laughs> Are you over it now? I was bitter for you got, time. Are you over it now? Yes. <laughs> Ironically, Hay picked Wilder to beat Fury every single time out, but heaped more and more praise on the Gypsy King each time he was proved wrong. Final prediction is Deontay Wilder wins via stoppage within the first eight rounds. Fury crazily, his arms behind his back. The decision is a split decision draw. I don't know, John T. Wilder, I don't think he, he, he boxed very well. I think, you know, as he said afterwards, he was rushing his work. He, maybe the big occasion got to him. I'll tell you what's going to happen. He's going to get bullied to death and stopped in about eight or nine rounds. Uh, I, I think it's a dangerous tactic. It's, a, it's crazy. Ah, Go trying to, there's uh, a way to knock a man out. Yeah. No, he's not going to run in with his chin in the air. No, 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 for no, a big no, that didn't happen. I remember thinking, from the moment he said he doesn't expect it, I remember thinking, yeah, well, obviously they're not taking it seriously. I don't think he's got much time. Shot. And he's gone. He's gone. He's they the the towel The fight's all over. The fight's all over. Wow. Continues to impress. He continues to shut the doubters down and shut them up. I was one of the doubters going into this fight. I was like, nah, okay. Now, okay. Okay, 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 okay. he's done it. Wilder, who's, who's, who's had surgery on his arm to repair his arm and he's now bigger and stronger than he's ever been before. I just think, we, I think we're gonna get an upset and I think more now after that way in. Yeah, definitely got it wrong. I thought um, Wilder, both guns blazing, he's got his right hand back, that that would be enough to take Fury out. Today, against another cruiserweight turned heavyweight, the mind games continue. But this time, against an ice cold operator, it will take much more than words and antics for Fury to reach the sport's ultimate prize. That's part of the sport. I actually remember at the time thinking, oh, I hope one day before one of his big fights, he, he has to suffer this, so he's been that much of a about it. And here we are.